Welcome to the 14th video in this series of videos on programming chess engine C. So last video we looked at a very simple function resetting the board. In this video we're going to start getting into the fun of actually setting up a position. So if you go to your browser and type in FEN position as I've put into Google search here then the first hit for me anyway comes up something called Forsyth Edwards notation in the Wikipedia. And if you click on there, you don't have to read through all the descriptions because I'm going to describe it a little bit quicker. Basically, what an FEN is, Forsyth Edwards notation, or it'll be called from now on an FEN, is a representation in a string of characters of a position on a chessboard. And the way it's done, it's very simple. The first thing that's represented, reading from left to right, is all of the pieces on the 8th rank, followed by a forward, forward slash here, followed by all of the pieces on the 7th rank, forward slash, and so on. And at the end of the first rank, there's a space, and then a W or a B, which represents white or black to move, a space, and then capital letters representing the castling permission. So there's a capital K if white can still castle kingside, capital Q if white can still castle queenside, a small k if black can castle kingside, and a small q if black can castle queenside. Then there's a space, and then there's either a dash or, in algebraic notation, a square reference to represent an en passant square, if available. So in the starting position there isn't, so it's a dash, but if you look down at the next position after e4, e3 is now an en passant capture square. The next is the 50 move rule counter, which is increment, uh, which if you've read rules of chess, you'll understand what the 50 move rule is. Basically, if there's no capture or pawn push of 50 moves, then the game is a draw. And the last one is what's called the full move counter, which is one at the start of the game with white to move and is incremented after black has moved. So it's not play, which is each half move, it's a full move counter. So, the way when your engine communicates with the GUI this works is, say it was wanting to set up this position, I'll just make a new file here, the GUI would send, using the UCI protocol, position, FEN, and the position with a new line. What our program needs to be able to do is first of all recognize position FEN and then starting at the R here walk through this string and translate this string into a position on the chessboard and just to further imprint the way these FEN strings work I've opened up one of the GUIs we'll later be using to connect our program to an excellent one called Arena and I'm just going to put in some of these strings so you can get the idea if you haven't already of how they work. So this one is the start position. So this is saying there's a oh an upper sorry lowercase letters means black and uppercase letters is white. And one of the things I've forgotten is if you see a number that says how many consecutive squares are empty. So in the start position we have all black pieces on the eighth rank with rook knight bishop queen king bishop knight rook as we have in the start position. End of rank Go on to the 7th rank, we have 8 black pawns. On the 6th rank, we have absolutely nothing, as you can see here. So we have an 8, because we have 8 empty squares. And I don't think I need to go through it in any more detail. It's obvious what the piece layout is. White is to move. Both sides have full king castling permission. We're on the first full move. The 50 move rule is 0. We haven't had a move yet, a half move. And there's no 1% square. So now, as it says here, this is a really good description I find on the Wikipedia, actually. Um, here's the position notation after 1E4. So if I just copy that and go position, get FRM from clipboard, and this is the position we have. And now I'll just move that to the side. Let's see if I can get away with actually moving things around a little bit so we can see them a bit easier. A little bit smaller. Okay, good. So if you look at this second position and compare it with the first, you'll see that we have the same situation or setup for 
these ranks up until here. The first four ranks have stayed exactly the same. Oops, that's correct as well. But now we've got a 4, a capital P, and a 3. And that means we've got 1, 2, 3, 4 empty squares, a white pawn, and then 1, 2, 3 empty squares. And then a forward slash, so on to the next rank, 8 empty squares. Now we have 1, 2, 3, 4 capital P, so 4 pawns, a 1, saying an empty square, and then 3 capital P's representing 3 pawns, and then the first rank is exactly the same. We now have a small b, because it's black to move. The castling permissions are the same as they were before. But now you'll see that the en passant square is set to e3. That's because if you're, if you're familiar with the rules of chess, I hope you are by now, when you move a pawn two squares, then it can be captured if another pawn is standing adjacent. So in this case on d4 or f4, it would be able to capture that pawn on the square e3 only in the next move. So at the moment, e3 is set as what's known as the en passant square. And then after playing c5, let's just copy one more in. And now this is played, and let's have a look again at the position here. And now you see we've got exactly the same setup for the back rank, the 8th rank. A forward slash, the 7th rank is now a black pawn, a black pawn, a space, and 5 black pawns, as you can see here. Then the next rank, the 6th rank, 8 spaces, and then a 2 spaces, a black pawn, and 5 spaces, 2 black pawn, and 5, and so on. And c6 is now set as the en passant square because this move has just been played. So that's it really for this video because it's already getting on for seven minutes. And what we need to do in the next video is we need to write a function or start writing a function that will take a string in this format, in the fen string, or a pointer to this string, and actually walk through this string left to right and set the board up accordingly. And as you can imagine, probably imagine, it's a little bit tricky because you start at the back rank and walk through from left to right, so you don't do it in any convenient manner for the indexing in the array, so you have to be a little bit careful. But like I said, we'll have a look at exactly doing that in the next video. I hope that made some sense about FEM notation, and comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube. See you in the next video.